Hello, I'm Bradley, and welcome to my channel. So, it has been a year since my saber left this world, and uh, I mean, a year. A year has just absolutely. Some days I feel a year has flown on, and some days I feel like that it's been an absolute lifetime since I have had him. And Saber was my Alaska Malamalt, who he was a member of our family. He was literally the heart and soul of our family for 12 years. And he was a puppy always, through and through. <laughs> Even when he was older, he still remained that puppy, always answered to puppy. So his name was Saber. So he was called Saber, Sabi, we used to call him Sabe. I used to call him Babe a lot of the time. Puppy. Hey Babe, I used to go, and I always used to say, Good morning, pup, like that. And I used to give him a big hug and kiss him on the cheek. Always. Sometimes he would get a little bit annoyed, and sometimes he would sort of be like, so loving and so sort of accepting straight away, first thing in the morning, or goodness knows what time it would be. And um but he would he would love to snooze and love to sleep. So he'd have a he'd have that sort of moment and then he would be adamant that he was going back to sleep. So Sabe used to Sabe used to sleep a lot, absolutely a lot, and particularly when he got a bit older, he used to love his bed. And now Sabre had an orthopedic bed. He had his own room. He had near enough a bed uh, a bed in in our lounge, in our dining room, and in his room. Um, and um, everywhere in the hallway, everywhere he had a place where he could be comfortable and snooze and just lounge. Because Sabi loved comfort, he loved snoozing, and he he loved his family. He loved his family. He he was the most loving, most. He literally had a golden soul. He he literally did. Um. That Alaskan Malamalt was just a beautiful soul. He really, really was a beautiful soul. I remember he would always be so, so protective. He would be so protective of our whole family. But there was one occasion where um, my nan, who I'm very, very close to, my mum's mum, wasn't particularly very well at the time. It was those years when she had recently been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but she was still very strong, but she was having some problems. And in her general health, she was going through times where she would be so stressed out, it would almost take her into a bit of a panic attack to the point of having a bit of a breakdown where life was just generally too much. She had a very stressful life. Um, in her later years, and I still have my nan now. She's soon to turn 95, but she's in a different time of her life. But this particular time when my nan was at our house, she began to get really unwell. In the matter of minutes, she went from sitting on our sofa, and I remember being sat next to my nan, and I remember having a conversation with my nan, and she wasn't responding. My mum was in the kitchen, and my twin brother was in the lounge with us as well, and we started to panic. Um, my twin brother and I really started to panic, and Nan wasn't responding. I don't necessarily remember where Sabe was, but um, but all of a sudden, Nan just did not respond. She did not talk at all, and I literally shouted into the kitchen at my mum um, what was happening with Nan, and I remember my mum coming in, and it was it, it was just absolutely traumatic. Um, and, for, and for a moment, we thought that something had happened, and we'd lost her. But some time passed, and we were waiting for the ambulance, and um, she started to come back round. But she was saying that she was so cold, and she was really, really cold. And with that, Sabre sprawled out on my nan, and it was just like that he was taking care. He knew what was going on. He knew. He, they say that animals can sense, but Sabre truly sensed when you were unwell. And um, he kept my nan warm throughout that really worrying, traumatic time. And just that moment, Sabre was a huge, huge part of our family. My mum always said <laughs> he was one of her sons which couldn't talk. But he could talk. He could talk. When I wasn't very well, and I've had a lot of health problems sort of growing up and things, and unfortunately I still do, um, but Sabre always sensed, he always sensed, if I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would go downstairs not very well, he would be in his room, and we had um, 
like a, a pull along sliding glass doors. And um, Sabe would be sat up because if we didn't do that, he would be sort of walking throughout. This was when he was younger. He'd be walking all through the house at night because he'd sleep from one one sort of comfy spot to another to another. And he was a big boy. He was a big boy with big bouncy feet so you would hear him and um he would sense i mean even when my mum when my mum wasn't very well unfortunately she suffers with thank goodness she hasn't had it for a long time labyrinthitis and if anybody knows that severe vertigo and sickness and sabe would always know and this was just this was just sabe he was so caring not just as an animal but as this beautiful soul and he he just knew he just knew um he really was. And I mean, every time you'd come into the house, he would be there waiting. He would be waiting. And he'd look at you much to say, you're back. Where have you been? Type thing. And um, and uh, if if I didn't have a good day or if I was a bit stressed, I would I would come down to his level and give him a hug and a squeeze. And I and I and we'd sort of play and and uh, he would always let you know when he'd had enough because then he would he'd do this little like cute bark and he'd do this cute growl and shake his head. And um, but then he would always sometimes go over the top as well. And he would do like this sort of bite just to let, not a bite, he would grab hold and he would just sort of do this like squeeze of his teeth and then let go, just more or less like a warning. Look, I'm telling you now, you're going over the top type thing. But um, yeah, yeah, he, uh, he was, uh, is truly special. And I say is because I believe in God. Um, and the one thing what has got me through a lot of difficult times is, is having that faith and very often when I pray I always take comfort from the fact that I believe that uh, Saber, our, our family Saber, is with God and I truly do believe that and I always say please love and cherish him, please take care of him and um, please let him know that that he is loved and um, and, and that does bring great comfort to me that he's there. And I hope one day, obviously, I hope that we all have a very long life. But I hope one day when my time comes to walk through uh, into those gates that I really, I really do hope that Sabre is there. And I, and I have faith that he will be and um, all bright and bushy tailed waiting <laughs> um, at the Rainbow Bridge. And that brings me on to something which I want to uh, just sort of cover in this clip that when Sabre first uh, passed away, which was the 27th of January, so it's just over a year now, um, I came across, I, it was a very, very difficult time for us all, a very difficult time in my family. And when he first went, he went downhill in the matter, Sabre had hip dysplasia um, from when he was a puppy. And he was about three or four when the when things started to become a little bit of a known issue that Sabe had this problem with his hips so we have to be careful so Sabe enjoyed long walks and things as a younger dog and um and I hate calling him a dog because he was so much more he was so much more um he was a family member an absolute family member and uh, so later on in life this sort of never became too much of an issue, but it just became that Sabre would get a little bit slower as a year went on, or he would have to take a little bit more of a sleep, or he'd have to take a bit more of a break. And But then once he'd done that, he'd be recharged and he was ready to go. And he was always very active when he was awake, bless him. Um, but this is something which, uh, and Sabre kind of, the Christmas of 2019, Sabe was slowing up but he was still full of uh, full of life full of everything he loved christmas he would have his own presents um my mum and dad would spoil him we would spoil him as his brothers as to speak and um, which we were i truly do believe that and um i even say to my niece's nephew that um that's your uncle sabby and we always have a laugh about that but um he would have his own presents and he would unwrap them in his own way, bless him. And he would be so, so excited, like this little child. And Christmas 19, um, we done that. We celebrated that with him. Um, never in a million years did I not think that he would be here for another one. And when we had Christmas 2019, we went into the new year. Save really slowed down. It was like almost over a gradual process. And then overnight, it was like, 
something was really starting to be wrong. So we, his hips really started, he went from having slow gradual walks to not being able to go out at all. Um, and he then had this real luxurious, slow pace of life. And that went from a couple of months to not being able to really do too much activity at all. And within a two week period, Seb went from being able to stand, um, and enjoy his food and enjoy life to in two weeks he changed and every single day it was like change 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 he completely went off of his food his character changed um he in a he he turned kind of almost snappy that he didn't want to be he didn't kind of want this moddy coddling sort of loved or to be squeezed or to be pulled around or anything anymore which Sable always loved um and within two weeks he lost the ability to be able to get up himself so we had to use two hoists underneath him to bring him up um and he started to have toilet problems very quickly which Sable never ever had in his life at all at all so I've always done this funny thing when he needed to use the bathroom. He would bang his paw on the back door so he knew what he wanted to do. And very often, bless him, he had a huge, he was he was beautiful. He is beautiful. He had a huge white puffy face. Anybody who knows what Alaska Malamont is, they have humongous, luxurious, beautiful fur. And his tail would be humongous, like you spent a day back combing it huge. And um, very, very often, if Sabe had like a bit of a bad stomach or something, <laughs> you've seen Saber run from literally we have quite a not a huge house but we have a fair size house so Saber would literally run from from one room all the way through the house to the back door bang on the door quickly and fly up the garden and of course you knew bless him what was happening but do you know what, that in that two-week period all of that completely changed where he couldn't get himself up anymore I remember me and my mum going out and we get him comfortable in one room and we would we would go out and do what we had to do or go out for a couple of hours and then come back and very often we would what would usually happen is Sabe would come running to the door he would go through all the bags check whatever every time we'd done shopping he would go through the bags and check everything and look for something himself like a like this that this so excited kid and um or this little little child he would act and Sabe was always childlike always childlike but he was a loving almost like a loving parent when you weren't feeling well you needed this pick me up in life and in this two week period when we'd come back through the door that never happened Sabe so would still be in the same spot he couldn't move bless him so it very very quickly became not a very happy life for him and as each day went on he lost he lost everything bless him and as much as i regret letting him go on the 27th of January uh, 2020 I would do anything to have him back but the day it was a, it was a weekend and the Friday I had had new glasses and we were in the lounge and I was sat in the chair in the corner of the room my parents were sat in front of me but Sub's back was he was led facing my parents and his back was I was sort of sat like this and Sub was in front of me and I put these new glasses on which I collected and I said what do you think mum and um and my dad was there, and all of a sudden, Savvy put his head back, looked back, looked at me much to say, they're, they're nice, Brad, they're nice. And right to the end, Sabe was just this loving, loving blessing of a soul, which I sincerely miss. And that was the Friday. The Saturday, Sabe was really unwell. We had some problems with him sort of in the house. Um, he was really unwell. Um, and it was an evening where my twin brother stayed, and he slept downstairs, and Saber slept in front of him. He was very unwell, and in the end we had to bring water to him, because he wasn't even getting up and having a drink, and we had to feed him. And then as we moved into the Sunday, Sabe had a real awful, awful day, awful day, and he was really beginning to get really, really unwell. And then early hours of Sunday morning into uh, Monday, he, uh, or late Monday rather, into early hours of Monday, he was again really very unwell. Um, a sort of bathroom relating issue, related issues with him, sort of just his whole demeanour had changed and you could see that he was, he was being tortured. And at this point we'd had him checked and there was the vet who was a very, very lovely an amazing amazing vet came to the house and she's seen him several times the hip dysplasia in his legs was getting worse um he'd had a lot of problems in his hips but 
he had had what she'd felt some type of lump on his spleen. And, um, and this weekend, the Monday, was when it happened, which was the 27th of January. Um, he was absolutely, he was in so much pain. He could not get up off the floor. We didn't know what to do. Um, it was, it was heartbreaking, heartbreaking. I remember moving him from this awkward position he'd got himself in. Our dining room is a wooden floor and he couldn't move from it when he used to never have no problems at all. And I remember putting my hand underneath him, like his bum, where he was led down. And I remember putting my, it would have been this side actually, um, I remember sliding my arm and he was really wincing and crying out under, under him. And I remember putting my head against his and I could just hear, I can hear him now, whining and crying and, and really wincing out for life, bless him. And I remember slowly pulling him across or slowly sort of sliding him across the floor. And that was the position where he stayed. And, um, I kind of knew that something was going on. We had the decision to have him tested and to have him scanned and everything, but um, my parents chose not to put him through that. And I, and I agree with that. I agree with that decision. Um, but how quickly he went, um, I think we knew what it was. It took same so quickly. And in this particular space where we moved him in the dining room, we called my father back from work. Um, we called the vet and um, the vet came to the house, bless, bless her, and she was lovely, she was lovely, and um, I won't go into that detail, but Sabe fell asleep on his quilt, his duvet, which my mum always, always looked after him in the way that he was a child, and he had duvets and cushions and, and pillows, and he, and he fell asleep and died on his own pillow wrapped up in his own duvet with his mum and dad over him and we were all crying and I remember me and my twin brother watching watching um, him as he took his last breaths as he disappeared and he took his um, steps uh, with the Lord and um, I remember when he was took out the house and he was wrapped in his own duvet and um, as he left, as he left, I, I bent down to him and um, I put my face against his face and I kissed him and that was the last time. This is when Sabre died. Um, when Sabre died, I looked online. This is a poem, poem which I take a lot of comfort from. And so this is me when Sabre was well. And uh, <laughs> sorry didn't intend getting emotional. And this is the poem. So, I'm still here, friend. Please don't mourn for me. I'm still here, though you don't see me. I'm right by your side, each night and day. And within your heart, I long to stay. My body is gone, but I'm always near. I'm everything you feel, see or hear. My spirit is free, but I'll never depart. As long as you keep me, in your heart. I never wander out of your sight, I'm the brightest star on a summer night. I'm never beyond your reach, I'm the warm moist sand when you're at the beach, I'm the colourful leaves when autumn's around, I'm the pure white snow that blankets the ground, I'm the beautiful flowers of which you're so fond, the clear cool water in a quiet pond. I'm the first bright blossom you'll see in the spring, the first warm raindrop that April will bring. I'm the first ray of light when the sun starts to shine, and you'll see that face in the moon is mine. When you start thinking there's no one to love you, you can talk to me through the Lord above you. I'll whisper my answer through the leaves on the trees, and you will feel my presence in the soft summer breeze and the hot salty tears that flow when you weep and I'm the beautiful dreams that come while you sleep and the smile you see on a baby's face just look for me friend on every place sorry sorry um and th that I took a lot of comfort from 
And um, yeah, so year, but it's still very difficult. Still very difficult. Still very difficult. But ending this on a positive, what gives me comfort, and it's he's up above, he's at the Rainbow Bridge, and he's there waiting for whenever, hopefully my family have a very long life and we'll all be together again in the end. That's what my nan used to say, bless her. That we'll all be together, we'll all be together again one day. And that's what I believe. Um, yeah, so it's been a year, but anybody, anybody who says, how do you deal with it? Unfortunately, you just have to, you have to live with it. Yeah, it doesn't get any easier. You just learn to kind of live with it, that they're not there. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy, not easy at all. On that note, on that note, thank you for sharing that with me. Um, you may wonder why I have this on my channel. My channel is all about the journey of life, and there's so much good, and unfortunately there is heartache in our life. And uh, this was certainly one for my family. Um, whew, do I wish I could have him back? But unfortunately, time doesn't stand still, does it? It moves on. Um, but yeah, but yeah. We made the decision to have him cremated, um, and he's in a box, bless him, and he's, I actually collected him, when I collect, when I collected him, I'd done the same walk which we used to walk together, and um, I held him tight to my heart, and um, we came in and we had like a, a little bit of something with the family, my parents, and um, he sits on a dresser in our lounge, and uh, with a picture behind with two candles, so he's still part of family life all the time. All the time, and he always will be. Um, thank you very much indeed for sharing this with me, and love and cherish, love and cherish your furry animals, and love and cherish your family around you, and um, never put off from telling somebody that you love them. Never, never, ever put off a moment. Do it whilst you can. Do it whilst you can. We were privileged to have twelve long years. Of Saber's life, and he had a very privileged life. It went fast, but he had one hell of a life, and we had a hell of a ride together, bless him. And uh, I only wish it could have been longer. Thank you for sharing this with me, and until next time, we'll see them. Bye bye now.